From WXII 12 News, this is Breaking News. We are following breaking news out of Greensboro, where an eight-year-old is in the hospital after she was shot this morning. WXI 12's Louis Tran joins us live from Autumn Drive. And Louis, what can you tell us? Hey, Christine and Lindsay. Greensboro police tell me that the eight-year-old little girl was sleeping in her bed when someone fired shots at her house. Neighbors tell me that the shooting happened at this home right behind me. And if you pan to the right, you can see one bullet hole that's left in the front window. The shooting happened around one this morning. Police say that the little girl was sleeping in her bed when a bullet pierced her bedroom wall and struck her. At this time, she's in critical condition. I spoke with a neighbor who did not want to be identified for safety reasons, but she told me when she learned about the shooting, it shocked her. She says that she's lived in this neighborhood for almost 50 years. I've never had no problem with nobody around here. Cause I mean, I'm, it's, it's like I say, my neighbor next door, um, they take out my, when they take their trash cans out, they take mine. When they pull theirs in, they pull, they pull mine in. By me being an old lady, whatever the case may be, they always check on me to make sure I'm okay. Now, police did not share any details on a possible suspect. I did reach out to a spokesperson, and I'm still waiting to hear back to get more information. In Greensboro, I'm Louis Tran, WXII 12 News. All right, Louie, thank you. We have more breaking news. Winston-Salem police say a man's dead after a stabbing this morning. We're just getting the details right now. It happened around 530 this morning on North Cameron Avenue, just off New Walkertown Road. Police say they found 63 year old Archie Nash dead at the scene. We are told it appears that Nash got into a disturbance with an acquaintance when he was stabbed. Right now, no word on whether or not any arrests have been made. Happening now, it is a WXII 12 first warning weather impact day. You're taking a live look at our Graham Sky Cam right now, where we have had rain and clouds all throughout the day. So what can we expect tonight? Meteorologist Michelle Kennedy is in the Weather Center with the latest. Michelle? Well, hey there, we are talking about those showers out there right now. You can see them lifting in still mainly to the east and well as we go into the afternoon hours. The chilly conditions are going to be still in place. We had hoped that this warm front would lift in and bring those temperatures into the 50s. Instead, we're seeing it just nudge ever so slightly up over Ashboro and Burlington. So warmer temperatures still down to our south and we're stuck in that chilly flow. Right now, the heaviest of the rains have moved on from what we had earlier today. A lot of folks tapping into more than one inch totals and you're looking out there right now at heavy rain from Ashboro or actually from Bisco as you go into southern sections here, Randolph County. Light showers though along Interstate 40, so it's still showery, not as rainy as it was this morning where we had those soaking rains filling in with those cold 30s. So we have warmed up just a touch, but not by a whole lot. In the Atkinville and King, you can see some scattered showers here, some moderate pockets just to the east of King there. And if you're traveling into the mountains, we have warmed above the freezing mark, so we don't have to worry about the wintry mix at the moment. That may redevelop as we go overnight. Temperatures at 37 degrees in Sparta. We're at 40 in Greensboro. We have just hit 50 in Ashboro. So that warm front beginning to push north just a little bit. It'll impact folks out through Burlington. And it looks like most folks are not going to have to worry about thunderstorm activity, at least across our region as we go into the next few hours. We'd really love to see some warmer temperatures more quickly. Not happening, though, for parts of the triad. You're seeing rainfall totals 8 tenths of an inch in Burlington today, more than an inch and almost a half up in Mount Airy. So we'll talk more about your rainfall totals and what we have in store going into the evening hours. I can tell you it's going to be windy as our rain chances begin to wind down. We'll become blustery by tomorrow morning. Talking 20s for feels like temperatures. All right, Michelle, thank you. And now's a good time to download the WXII 12 News app. You can track storms right down to your neighborhood with our interactive radar. New here at four, a Piedmont Triad Church project halted after an online scam left Elkin Valley Baptist Church out more than $793,000. The church was founded back in 1884, and the older sanctuary was outgrown around seven years ago. After years of waiting, the church had finally raised the funds for a new sanctuary to be built, and they broke ground back in September. But the money to pay for the project was intercepted through an email by cyber scammers. Senior Pastor Johnny Blevin says the church received an email back in November from the builders working on the project, which included an October bill payment. Following that email was a clone email with instructions on how to pay. It turns out the email the church responded to with the payment was a scam. At that point, you know, we 
thought we had paid Landmark, and, and of course, Landmark was waiting on a check. So we actually didn't find out until approximately almost nine days later when Landmark asked about the payment. We said, well, we have paid, and then through you know, investigation, we found out it was a fraudulent account. It's sad to see what they did in just a you know, few moments of time, but I would, I would say to them, I hope they feel some conviction and, and I'd love to see them return it. Uh, but at the same time, I'd say to them that you know, they, they won't stop us. I think good will overcome evil every time. The FBI is currently investigating the crime and the church has also hired a cyber analyst. Blevins tells us he's hoping the project can continue to move forward in February. If you'd like to donate, you can find a link to the church's GoFundMe in this story on our website, WXII12.com. The future of abortion in North Carolina is now on the clock as lawmakers return to work in Raleigh. It is one of several major issues on the agenda as the long session of the General Assembly gets underway. Bill O'Neill has a story. Gentlemen from Caldwell, Representative Hall, recognized for motion. Republicans remain in power and are now just one vote shy of a supermajority. That would allow them to adopt their agenda without threat of a veto from Governor Cooper. Senate leader Phil Berger says his agenda remains the same. And that is to uh, make sure our budgets are balanced, that uh, we don't spend too much money, uh, that uh, we reduce the tax burden on the people of the state and uh, reduce the regulatory burdens that uh, slow job growth. Democrats worry that further tax cuts will leave the state with less money for their top issues, such as education and health care. I want Medicaid expansion to get passed through the House. Uh, and, and for us to get that signed into law. Lawmakers came close to expanding Medicaid last year. The Senate passed it, but it failed in the House. The Supreme Court's ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade sets the stage for new laws on reproductive rights. Senator Berger says he expects the legislature will take action on the issue. Exactly what that will look like uh, remains to be seen. We'll have conversations with our members and just see where the membership is uh, and then move from there. Berger says he favors reducing North Carolina's current law, which allows abortion up to 20 weeks. I would hope that the state will stay where it is. Senator Gladys Robinson, a Guilford County Democrat, says she doesn't want to see any further restrictions on women's rights. Health care belongs be between the woman and her doctor and even her family. Uh, so I am hoping that we won't go down that road. Watchdog group Common Cause North Carolina is raising concern over what it calls ambush votes. Republicans adopted rules in the House allowing them to override the governor's veto without warning. The House is just one vote short of a GOP supermajority. It just strikes uh, unfair and trickery, as we have said, uh, to try to pass laws in that manner. So we're really worried about everything, but a lot of these big issues, including democracy issues as well. Besides abortion and Medicaid expansion, lawmakers are expected once again to wrestle with issues such as sports gambling, medical marijuana, and voting oh, rights. The public deserves to have at least an opportunity to have the transparency of seeing the debate and be able to weigh in. Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News. And on this first day of the new session, Democrats have already introduced a bill to create an independent commission to deal with redrawing district lines. Meantime, Republicans have introduced legislation forcing sheriffs to cooperate with ICE agents. Both of these measures failed last year. Highway Patrol is releasing new details on a deadly crash in Davidson County earlier this month. A fourth person has died as a result of that crash. According to Highway Patrol, Robin De Gennaro was driving at 90 miles per hour with a BAC of 0.23 when she crashed into a car head on on Highway 109. Troopers say she then hit an SUV. Three people, Brittany Carter and her two children, Aiden and Lincoln Palmer, all died at the scene. De Janeiro later died from her injuries. In just two hours, Winston-Salem residents will have the opportunity to meet the four finalists for the city's next police chief position. WXII 12's Kara Peters joins us live from Salem Lake Marina, where the public forum will take place. And Kara, this is the second forum hosted by the city. 
Hey there, Lindsay, that's exactly right. In fact, last week, residents had the opportunity to ask questions and give input on what they'd like to see in their next police chief. Well, tonight, those finalists will be asked questions by a community panel. Now, as a reminder, the four finalists are Jose Manny Gomez, William Penn Jr., and Wilson Weaver II. All three currently serve as assistant chiefs with Winston-Salem Police. Also, current Danville, Virginia Police Chief Scott Booth is also in the running. Now, as a reminder, the city City hopes to select the next police chief by the end of the month. And for more information on what the, fan the finalists had to say tonight, I will be having that report tonight at 10 and 11. Live in Winston-Salem, I'm Kara Peters, WXII 12 News. Stand by. <laughs> Well, we are live for our first food drive of this year, and we're in Pilot Mountain at the Hardee's on Main Street. So we'd love for you to come out. There's only a fine mist coming down right now, so you can get out. None of the heavy rain we had earlier. Hope to see you, and we'll tell you more about it coming up. The way we talk about things is so important and so impactful. How one woman is sharing her story to inspire others. The one thing she says might just save your life. Coming up. There are enough surprises in your day. Don't let the weather be one of them. Get Michelle Kennedy's trusted forecast on the WXII 12 News app. Happening now, we are holding our first food drive of 2023, collecting donations for Second Harvest Food Bank. Let's check in with WXII 12 Chief Meteorologist Lainey Pope. She is at the Hardee's on West Main Street in Pilot Mountain. Lainey, other than the wet weather, how's it going out there? <laughs> 
Oh, it's actually going great. You know, Audrey did a great job this morning with Joe Kalar and the surrounding community. We've already filled 11 boxes of food here, and I think we actually have someone that's making a donation right now. We are at the Hardee's on Main Street in Pilot Mountain. She's getting some cash. I can see her sort of showing that to me, so we're excited that she's going to be helping and donating. Maybe she'll say something to us here. Hi, thank you so much for coming out and making a donation. Do you have something you'd like to drop I off? Do, I do. Oh, how cute. Look at the puppy. All right, that's Oliver. Okay. Great, fantastic, and a little bit of cash as well. Thank you so much. And your name is? Shirley. Shirley, thanks for giving back to the community here in Pilot Mountain. It is our first food drive of the year, and we are doing so well. I'm gonna drop this off with Zach Lake. So we have not only a donation, but we also have some money. So Zach, how have we been doing here for Second Harvest so far today? Yeah, so uh, I, just a couple of hours ago, I think we had hit the uh, roughly over the $11,000 dollar mark uh, for the in station uh, our, as far as what we've collected we've done about 12 boxes here and we're still growing so uh, once again we just want to say thank you to the community out here they've definitely showed up and showed out so yeah absolutely and we always know that uh, Surrey County is going to turn out and support as I mentioned we've done a great job already today he mentioned that we have uh, 11,000 already we have a partner of the food bank Joyce Kofeld who is actually matching dollar for dollar up until 12,500 for today. So if you give a dollar, we get an automatic match. So that will go a long way as well. Let's see some of the items that you can also bring out to donate. Over here, I saw a real good box that shows some peanut butter in here that you can donate. Also some canned goods. It is a cold day. It's not as wet as it was earlier. Folks, I know you're sitting inside where it's nice and warm and you can easily make a donation from there as well. Go to WXII12.com slash Second Harvest and you can help feed those who are in need. I'll send it back to you guys now. Thank you, Lainey. So far you have raised almost $25,000 for Second Harvest. That includes a generous dollar for dollar match from Joyce Kofelt. As Lainey mentioned, you've also donated about 2,200 pounds of food so far. Thank you so much for helping those in need. And as we just saw Lainey out there dealing with some wet weather, but a good thing is it's not stopping people from donating. So that is good news. Let's talk about what we can expect in the next few hours and into tomorrow. Michelle Kennedy is here to tell us more. Hey, Michelle. Hey there. You know, we are talking about wet roads right now, and we have got some rain out there still going on for Graham. This has been a long stretch for folks there as they has the showers starting after 730 this morning and cold rains. We've been in the 30s to near 40, beginning to warm up out to the west, but look in the mountains right now near Stewart. We have fog and we still have some of that light mist and drizzle falling. We've got winds out of the northwest at about 16 miles an hour and we're looking at some of that wintry mix trying to build up in those upper elevations. You can kind of see that sneaky pink line there rolling through for folks up into Patrick County and we've had a couple rounds of that recently. Right now our bigger concern will be fog out through Mount Airy and along the Blue Ridge Parkway. If you're traveling on Interstate 52 as well heading back on 421 and then some wet weather as we go east. Temperature today only near 50. I think at this point I just don't think we're going to be able to work out those mid 50s. We have a few folks in Ashboro and Burlington that may begin to warm a little bit, but for breezy weather, everyone will start to experience the gusts coming up and overnight that does help to alleviate the temperatures dropping too quickly. So we should be down into the 30s tomorrow morning. Mid 30s though may feel like the 20s thanks to those very strong gusts at about 30 miles an hour. All right, chilly out there right now. We've been just in that pocket of cool air as that warm front has been trying to roll just to the north in the eastern triad. It's not doing a great job of warming anybody up except for folks out in Raleigh and toward the coast. Right now we've talked about those little spots that we're noticing where temperatures are closer to the low 30s and the elevation impacting folks there. Light scattered showers and Reedsville through Ashboro. We've got some moderate downpours along 64. These are the zones that are going to see more of the rain for a little bit longer. So you might see that extended through 7, 8 o'clock, whereas by 6 we really should begin to see most of this winding down from Trap Hill 
through Mount Airy. So Surrey, Yakin counties, you'll see an improvement more quickly. And in the mountains too, just light patchy action at this hour. You're noticing a whole lot of different wind speeds out there because of the wind patterns that are created as that warm front lifts in from the east. And we've got that weather with an east northeasterly flow locked in in a cool wedge. And then you've got that south wind up in Galax. So temperatures there could actually warm just a little bit more. And you're in fact seeing those 50s, 59 in Abingdon. So they've been able to warm. They're not part of this cool wedge where they're trapped with this moisture we have here. But you've got 39 in Pilot Mountain where Chief Meteorologist Lenny Pope is out of the second harvest food drive. So we're looking at 39 in Hayes as well, 46 a little bit farther south and west. In the Triad, you have made it now to 61 out in Pittsburgh. So you see that warm front impacting folks to our east, unfortunately. Haven't been able to really do much with the upper 40s to near 50 in Ashboro. That's about as far as we can go. 45 in Liberty and 39 right now for folks in Greensboro and spots. It is a cold rain and those temperatures are actually going to hold pretty steady over the next several hours. Tomorrow morning down into the 30s. We expect 36 degrees in the Triad. You're going to be clear. You have the blustery gusty winds feeling like the 20s. Teens in the mountains. Mountains uh, tomorrow morning are going to be certainly colder. We'll also be gusty though throughout the day. That doesn't really improve until about 7 o'clock tomorrow night. So extending through the afternoon with highs near 49 in the triad, gusts to 25 miles an hour. So layers are a must, especially if you have to walk to work or stand out at the bus stops. You've got temperatures colder tomorrow morning in the foothills too at 33 with 48 for an afternoon high and sunshine. We have those gusts taking winds up to 30 miles an hour and you're going to feel most of your day like the 20s. Not fun in the mountains, but the winds do improve for a Friday. The seven day forecast shows you that we've got 45 on Friday, 54 on Saturday and a great start to our weekend. At least it's dry. All right, getting a check on traffic now. A live look at I-40 at Sandy Ridge Road in Greensboro, where the roads are wet, so be very careful if you are out driving, but no delays to report here at 421. Still ahead at 4 o'clock, a cancer survivor is inspiring others in the community how one triad woman hopes to make an impact by sharing her story.
Welcome back everyone in 12 Inspires. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month and a triad woman is sharing her own battle with the disease to encourage others. WXII 12's Joshua Davis spoke with her about making it through her diagnosis. Hillary Zakin says when she first learned of her cervical cancer diagnosis, everything around her froze, but she says she refused to let her diagnosis derail her life. Zakin says everything began spring of 2021, just as she was planning for her wedding and her son's bar mitzvah. She went to doctors after experiencing intense pain, and she was diagnosed with stage one cervical cancer, also known as adenocarcinoma. It's known for being aggressive and fast moving. By July, she was in surgery. She says her wedding and her son's bar mitzvah served as light at the end of the tunnel to get her through her surgery and recovery. She's now cancer free. And now she encourages people to talk about cervical cancer so more people know about it. That the way we talk about things is so important and so impactful. Again, if I talk to one person who talks to another person who talks to another person, you're spreading the knowledge and you're spreading the story and you're destigmatizing just by having these casual conversations. Zakin says she hopes her story inspires others to not just speak openly about their cancer, but to encourage others to not hesitate in seeking medical help if something is wrong. She says it might just save your life. In Winston-Salem, Joshua Davis, WXII 12 News. Still ahead, the war continues between Russia and Ukraine. The latest supply the U.S. is sending abroad to help them defeat Russia on the battleground and why President Biden has decided to make the move just now. And we are cold out there as we continue to talk about rains. We're in the 40s in the Triad and some 10 to 15 degrees colder than where we were yesterday at this time. We're going to let you know the best days to be outdoors and the warmer days, too. It's coming up. You're watching WXII 12 News. 
happening now. Today is a WXII 12 first warning weather impact. Hey, look at the roads out there. A lot of people on the roads and they could be a bit slick from this wet weather, so be careful. We're going to check in with meteorologist Michelle Kennedy now in the Weather Center with an update for us, Michelle. Yeah, we are talking about some very heavy rain out there still in a few spots in the Eastern Triad. Then by tomorrow morning, we're down into the 30s and it's cold and blustery, so we are going to kick out this rain. We're grateful to have had beneficial rainfall totals today, anywhere from more than three quarters of an inch in Winston-Salem to Burlington, about eight tenths of an inch and almost an inch in Martinsville did pretty well in Mount Airy, more than an inch. And we've got that warm front here stretched out over Ashboro through Burlington. So the scattered shower is still trending in the eastern triad. Now we're not quite done with that low at the surface either. It's still going to produce some scattered showers like mist for folks in the mountains to fog. And that's what we've got out there right now for you. Eventually between nine and about midnight, things start to dry out. We may even be able to get some clearing going toward the midnight hour and through early morning. You're going to notice temperatures kind of holding steady upper 30s, low 40s, and then they drop down into the mid 30s tomorrow morning. But you still feel like the 20s most of the overnight hours as the winds also are really picking up as that low is scooting out and a ridge builds in. Here's the snow chances too. You see that developing through 5, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning up in the ridges. Now there's very spotty. It's not as consistent looking as it was on the last weather system that brought us some snow to the ski slopes, but we could see it here and there and it looks light under about an inch. We're looking at those shower chances out of the picture for your Friday too. So we hold on to the sunshine tomorrow and Friday. You start off a little bit colder in the upper 20s and then we look ahead to see some really nice conditions to start your weekend. I'm looking forward to those 50s. 50s are the new 60s I think for us this week or at least to end the month. We're talking about 45 degrees on your Friday. These are the best days to be outdoors at least over the next seven. They're going to be dry. They're going to be sunny and not quite as breezy. And by Saturday we're at 54 degrees. We'll have much more for you on it coming up. All right, Michelle, thank you. Now is a good time to download the WXII 12 News app. You can track storms right down to your neighborhood with our interactive radar. And here are some stories we're following right now. An eight year old girl is in critical condition after being shot while she was sleeping. It happened around 1 a.m. on Autumn Drive in Greensboro. Police tell us someone fired shots at the house. Police did not release any details on a possible suspect. Winston-Salem police say a man is dead after a stabbing early this morning. It happened around 530 on North Cameron Avenue, just off New Walkertown Road. Police say they found 63 year old Archie Nash dead at the scene. We are told it appears Nash got into a disturbance with an acquaintance when he was stabbed. Right now, there's no word on whether any arrests have been made. And just into the newsroom, a deadly shooting under investigation in Guilford County. The sheriff's office says it happened around 5 o'clock this morning on Woodley Court in Jamestown. Deputies arrived to find the victim with a gunshot wound. That person has not yet been identified. We're told the suspect, Crystal Bennett, is now in custody, charged with first-degree murder. Today, President Biden announced the U.S. is sending sophisticated tanks to Ukraine to help the war-torn country fight back against Russia. German officials announced today they will be sending tanks to Ukraine as well. NBC's Alice Barr has the latest from Washington. And through every single step. In a major shift today, President Biden announcing the U.S. will send 31 of the most sophisticated tanks in the world to help Ukraine defend against Russia's relentless attacks. That's what this is about helping Ukraine defend and protect Ukrainian land. It is not an offensive threat to Russia. It comes as Germany announced it's also sending tanks to Ukraine and allowing other European allies to send their own German-made tanks. We are united. America is united and so is the world. The Biden administration had previously balked at sending these M1 Abrams tanks, saying they were too difficult to operate and maintain, now promising to include the necessary training and supplies. The reversal comes after continued diplomatic talks. Germany didn't force me to change your mind. We wanted to make sure we were all together. Moscow calling the move from the West extremely dangerous. Throughout the nearly year-long war, the U.S. has sought to support Ukraine's fight for freedom without provoking an escalated Russian response. Analysts predict a renewed Russian offensive against Ukraine this spring, and while it will take months for the U.S. tanks to arrive, Europe's can move more quickly. There'll be a significant NATO-supplied tank force on the battlefield well in time for the spring offensive. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky grateful for the support. Yeah, 
вдячний всьому світу за підтримку України. Assistance he and Western allies hope will change the war's trajectory to finally bring an end to Vladimir Putin's deadly war. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. The Justice Department is opening a criminal civil rights probe into the death of Tyre Nichols. The 29-year-old black man died three days after a traffic stop in Memphis on January 7th. Five Memphis police officers were fired after the incident. The police department says they violated multiple department policies. Today, the local U.S. attorney said he met the Nichols family at his office as the office launched the probe. I told them this federal civil rights investigation will be thorough, it will be methodical, and it will continue until we gather all the relevant facts. As with any other federal investigation, we will go where those facts take us. There is police body camera video of the incident, but officials have not yet released it. Replacing sitting, sleeping, or gentle movement with less than 10 minutes of moderate or vigorous physical activity each day may help your brain, according to a new study. Mandy Gaither explains why even small changes may make a big difference. It's no secret, moving is good for the body, and a new study finds more evidence that it's also good for the mind. They took 4,500 individuals in the UK, they strapped an activity monitor onto their thigh, and they looked at what did they do during the day, how much did they sleep, when were they active, when were they sedentary. After activity, researchers gave those studied a cognitive test. They found that the people who did just under 10 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise each day saw improvements to short-term memory and executive function, which helps with things like planning and organization. The converse was also true. If you shifted, downshifted from moderate or vigorous activity towards more sleep, sedentary behavior or light activity, by about seven to 10 minutes, you lost about one to 2% of your cognitive ability. While the cognitive improvement was modest, researchers found the benefits grew with more time spent doing more energetic workouts. Moderate physical activity is typically defined as brisk walking, bicycling, or running up and down stairs. Vigorous movement like running, swimming, and biking up a hill will boost your heart rate and breathing. They speculate that it could be increasing your cerebral perfusion or the blood flow to your brain. Additional study is needed, but researchers say even small changes can make a big difference in brain health. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. And while the study had some limitations, including a lack of information on the health of those studied, one health expert believes the findings illustrate that consistent movement patterns over time is as important, if not more important, than one single session of exercise. Home mortgage demand on the rise. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, the number of applications went up by 7% last week compared to the week before. Meanwhile, mortgage interest rates fell for the third straight week, dropping to the lowest level since September. Last week, the 30-year fixed rate reached 6.2%, and that rate was just about half that one year ago. America's largest banks are working to compete with Apple Pay and PayPal. Seven major banks, including Bank of America, Truist, and Wells Fargo, are working with Early Warning Services. That's the company that runs the Zelle Electronic Payment Service. And they're working to develop a new electronic wallet. It would allow people to make purchases online. It's expected to launch later this year. Skyrocketing egg prices have grocery shoppers weighing extreme measures to keep their fridges stocked. Now averaging 425 a dozen, the avian flu has been mostly blamed for the egg crisis. As NBC's Brian Chung reports, there are questions if the country's big egg producers have a hand in keeping these costs high. You got them eggs. Nobody follow you did they? High egg prices and demand have users on social media cracking jokes. But it's the nation's largest egg producers now facing the spotlight amid allegations of foul play. Advocacy group Farm Action has accused giants, including Cal Maine Foods, of working together in a collusive scheme to limit production and increase prices, all to juice their profits. Cal Maine is the top producer of eggs in the U.S., controlling about 20% of the market. Their quarterly profits were more than seven times larger than the year prior. During that time, the price of eggs more than doubled. In response to the allegations, Cal Maine says many factors, including the bird flu and increasing production costs, have contributed to higher prices. 
experts point out that egg farms are not the ultimate price setter. We have to keep in mind that there are also um, other players in the supply chain, such as retailers, um, whose margins have to be factored into the final price that we pay at the grocery store. Smaller farms like this one in Orondo, Washington, have been able to avoid huge price hikes because they've also been able to avoid the flu. Cage-free eggs were actually about 40 cents cheaper than conventional eggs in the first half of January. It's delivery day today. We don't want to completely price ourselves out of the market, and uh, we'd just like to be a good, wholesome uh, supplier for our local community. Whether the blame goes to bird flu or price gouging, shoppers are taking desperate measures to find cheaper eggs, from raising their own chickens to smuggling across the border, prompting the government to issue a warning of hefty fines up to $10,000. But some positive news, the USDA says prices are starting to come down as the holiday bump in demand fades. Signs of improvement after an extraordinary year for egg prices. And as we check traffic, this is a live look at Highway 52 at Rams Drive in Winston-Salem. At only 440, you can see all those headlights on. That's because it is wet out there. It's raining, but traffic looks pretty good considering that at 440. And the traffic has been steady here at the Hardee's in Pilot Mountain. The second harvest food drive continues here. We're filling up the boxes. Hadley has just stopped by and made a donation as well. We'd love to see you out here. Happening now, we are holding our first food drive of 2023, collecting donations for Second Harvest Food Bank. Let's check in with WXII 12 Chief Meteorologist Lainey Pope at the Hardee's on West Main Street in Pilot Mountain. And Lainey, it seems like the weather has not slowed the donations today. 
<laughs> Not at all. I will tell you what, I was just speaking with the manager here at Hardee's, Macy Milligan, and she is telling me that all day long they have had a steady stream of cars. Something that she shared with me that I thought was really sweet. She said she had all of her employees are so geared up about today that whenever they see a car come by and stop, they just get excited and they're like, there's another car. So, you know, it's a whole about community, right? Everyone deserves to eat. And if we all do our part, everyone can eat. And I'll tell you what, this community is doing its part for sure. We actually have someone in line here that I think is going to make a donation as well. I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so Jim's going to come and make a donation here in a bit. You know, we get those urgent calls right when we least expect it. And we've got another person here that's maybe coming out to make a donation. So, hi, how are you this afternoon? We are live on TV. Oh, thank you so much. What is your name? Tim. Tim, thank you for coming out in the cold. I know you don't have your hands bundled up, but stepping out here and helping out. We really appreciate it. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. So I'm going to hand this over to Zach. This is a cash donation for you, Zach. And then also here, got great news. We are actually filling up our third. Box now. So I've only been out here about an hour and we filled up almost two boxes. So we have had a steady stream of folks coming in and helping out. One other thing that Macy did is she actually printed out a flyer that she went to all the downtown businesses and made sure that they were spreading the word so that this community could give back to those in need. And you may be sitting on your couch thinking, I don't want to go out in the cold, but I really do want to provide some comfort and food for others. You can do that by visiting online at WXII12.com slash Second Harvest. And so far, I think I'm being told more than $11,000 we have raised online as well as what you see here behind me. So you're doing a great job. We're going to be out here until 630 this evening. So come on out and see me. Back inside now. Great to see that turnout. We've been dealing with rain and storms throughout the triad today. I love that it hasn't deterred people from going out there. I know because, so nice. you know, a lot of people, it's easy on a day like this to not leave your house. Right. So it's great to see people going out and donating in this weather. It is nice. And I'm glad they don't have to worry about as much rain, at least where Lady is right now up in Pilot Mountain. It's finally starting to wind down. It's a little misty and we do have some fog out there too with a few more patchy showers that could lift through. But look at all that rain moving to the east. This is where all that warm air is too from Columbia to Charleston. Look at this 71 degrees. Doesn't it sound lovely? Oh my goodness. We need to look at 71 at least as we're sitting in the 30s near 40 in the triad. It is cold out there. We've got that little pump of northeasterly flow keeping us in a chilly wedge and this is where we're getting the best rainfall too. We've got some mid-level support. We've got that surface front going for us right here. Rock Creek showers filling in over Liberty and Eli Whitney area up through Mebane and Burlington. So Interstate 40 is pretty wet right now. We've got ponding on the roadways too and some hydroplane conditions possible from areas of eastern Randolph County. So looking back to the west, the fog is settling in for the moment. We expect those winds to start picking up after midnight especially and this is when we'll get those gusts above the 30 mile an hour range for the mountains even higher on those big uh, mountain tops. So chilly for you right now. We've got that front combination as it slips up north and east tonight. This will allow for a new ridge of high pressure to build in. It's going to give us a pressure gradient difference though. So ridge builds in low exits and we've got the winds pick it up. So breezy for you with rain chances that'll continue for another few hours and wind down by overnight. We're clearing out. It's blustery. You're in the 30s feeling unfortunately like the 20s tomorrow morning. So it's a hat and glove kind of morning out there and you need to make sure you give yourself a little extra time too to start the car up. You've got temperatures at 49 degrees, gust to 25 miles an hour, Greensboro, Lexington and heading into Mount Airy and Wilkesboro starting out at 33 and we think temperatures are going to hold just above the freezing zone so we shouldn't have to worry about too much on the roadways but watch for a spot here and there black ice anything that's collected on the side roads that could become slick in your neighborhoods or on your decks that's where elevated surfaces can cool very quickly and more rapidly and that's where you get some slip and fall issues all right gusts to 20 miles an hour for you not quite as breezy as it will be in the triad in the mountains though those gusts come up to 35 miles an hour so you're high of about 35 36 to borrow field 
sales more like the 20s all day long. Well, except for the teens in the morning, so it gets just a little bit better. You've got sunshine, though. That's the good thing. Here's that hour by hour forecast. You can see where it is now spreading east out through Ashboro and Burlington. Last heavy pockets moving east. We may get one more cell a little later this evening, and it doesn't look great at this point to get thunderstorms. We haven't really seen much develop today in the foothills or in the sand hills as well, heading toward the coast. So 40s out there for you through early evening to upper 30s, and we're kind of hanging out there. And the winds should help to keep those temperatures up as it mixes the air. This system exits, and then we could drop in a little bit of snow for the mountains. This is on the western slope, so if you're traveling up into the ski slope areas like Banner Elk heading to uh, Beach Mountain, Sugar Mountain, those areas could see a little dusting, maybe up to an inch if we're lucky. We've got 40s out there, though, tomorrow afternoon. Now, we're forecasting upper 40s because the wind is out of the west and southwest, and that's going to help to keep a more warmth for us, even though it's going to feel colder with the winds. At least we pump temperatures up to the upper 40s. And by Friday morning, we're colder. We're down into the low 30s and upper 20s. Snowfall totals, though, only under that one inch total mark, as we mentioned. So looking forward to seeing some sunshine out there for you, too. We'll talk more about those rainfall totals coming up. You've got 49 degrees on your Thursday, 45 on Friday, and looking ahead, more rain chances through middle of next week, and then we could see a bigger cool down. So we'll enjoy the 50s as long as we have them, and it looks like the best sunny day is still Saturday. All right, Michelle, thank you. Still ahead, spreading hope in the hospital, how a group of young artists is using their skills to bring smiles. This edition of the Wake Forest Deacon Minute is brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery. Over $9.7 billion raised for education. With all the credits of Virginia, I, I just felt like after the first media timeout, I think it was 5-2, to two, but I thought it was fool's gold. I didn't think we were defending very well. Um, I know they started the game 2-14, for 14, but they were getting open shots. They went on a barrage and made nine straight. 
Uh, seven of those, I think, were threes, but they spread it all around. Clark, Franklin, Beekman, McNeely, they all made them. I think 14 to 12 was the last time we led, and we played from behind the rest of the game. It was a game of really weird runs, though. We finished the half 12-5 run, and we were in pretty good shape. Then we ran on another 15-7 run, and we're only down one. This edition of the Wake Forest Deacon Minute is brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery. Over $9.7 billion raised for education. Checking traffic, a live look at I-85 at I-40 in Greensboro, where things look clear here at 454. Nuclear power could help transport humans to Mars one day. NASA is working with an arm of the Defense Department to develop a nuclear thermal rocket engine. They want to create an engine that would rely on a nuclear reactor to propel a rocket through space. They tried to develop this type of technology before, but the program stalled. NASA says the first test could happen as early as 2027. Country music superstar Chris Stapleton will sing the national anthem at this year's Super Bowl. And the NFL did make the announcement yesterday. The Kentucky native, known for hits like Tennessee Whiskey, Parachute, and Starting Over. Rihanna is this year's halftime performer, and this year's Super Bowl will be in Glendale, Arizona, Sunday, February 12th. Well, Justin Bieber has sold the publishing rights to his catalog of music. According to Rolling Stone, the deal is about $200 million. That is believed to be the biggest deal for any artist of Bieber's generation. The deal means the rights holder, Hypnosis, will get to decide who can use Bieber's music. A New Jersey high school is working with a hospital to make patients feel a little more at ease. This is such a nice story. Jen Maxfield tells us about this special collaboration that has patients looking up for inspiration. Patients going in for an ultrasound, CAT scan or biopsy at Hackensack University Medical Center can look up for inspiration, calm and even a laugh. When they walk in the room over here, it's not dull anymore. It, it's got color. So like when they're laying down and waiting for the procedure to start, it's like there's something up there other than just a plain white ceiling. One ultrasound room features Mickey Mouse and Scooby-Doo. A CAT scan suite has the Simpsons. Another tile urges the patients to never give up. The bright, cheerful messages can lessen anxiety for children and adults. Patients are always raving about the tiles and telling us how much it's helped them get through their procedures. The hand-painted custom ceiling tiles were created by students at Garfield High School, who later visited the hospital to see their creations on display. I felt good about myself. I felt good about the thing that I did. And I felt happy for the people that do feel more at ease seeing them. The quality of the work that they did was phenomenal. I mean, they really took their time. They really got behind the idea. These art students here in Garfield worked for a month during the summer to create more than two dozen ceiling tiles. Each one has a unique design that the students develop themselves. It was inspiring because I've dealt with situations where I had to go to the hospital before, and it was something that I know that is very scary. Garfield's partnership with Hackensack University Medical Center might not be over just yet. Biology teacher and EMT Victoria Dervianic says the hospital has requested more painted tiles for other ceilings. I feel great and I'd love to see more of this. Such a great idea. That's such an anxious time for so many people, so it's nice to see that. Yeah, I love that they're pairing up to do something so inspirational. And that's the news at 4 o'clock, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Stick around for WXII 12 News at 5 in just a few minutes next.